Hey there. Uh, so I'm starting to post a few of those testimonial videos and I th they're, they're really powerful and encouraging to me. And, it, and, it's, and again, this is not about my ministry. This is about oh, I, what works. You know, that's all I really care about is what actually works. And preaching the gospel to yourself, man, it works. You listen to Vonda's testimony. She spelled it out really clearly. She tried it for a month, and what she found was that she couldn't. She wasn't holding bitterness in her heart towards people. She didn't have the some of the sin and anger issues that she's used to having, and she wasn't so sin conscious. That is beautiful, you know. And she gave a little example of how you know she does it and she just reminds herself of who she is in christ and uh fiery girls you know i mean ms is tough and yet god's bringing her through and she's learned to encourage herself in the lord it's the same thing as david encouraging himself in the lord different ways to say it you know i've coined the phrase preach the gospel to yourself but you want to call it that this is something lots of people do but my thing is, why does it work? And if you understand why it works, you'll do it more consistently. <laughs> because when I was, uh, when I first got saved, I was in the Word of Faith movement. And, uh, well, I, it wasn't really the full-blown Word of Faith movement. What we understood was that the Word was powerful. And we prayed the Word, you know. And I remember walking around and going on long walks and praying as many scriptures as I could remember about who I am in Christ and what God had done for me. And it washed me, but I didn't know that was what was washing me. And it's a practice I neglected for years and had to be brought back to. You know, I didn't know why I was doing or what I was doing. It was more like just I enjoyed it, so I was doing it, you know, but I, having the science of it, that this is what renewing your mind and wash, and the washing of the water of the word looks like. This is putting on Christ. This is walking according to the spirit. It's so simple. You know, the hearing of faith is how the spirit is supplied. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And Jesus said, my word is spirit and it is life. And he said, you know, if you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood, you've got no life in you. And to have life in your soul means that you have the word residing in your heart. And the word is Christ. It's how he makes his home in your heart and how he lives his life through you. The, the scripture exalts the word above the name. Jesus you know, God says, I exalt my word above my name. The, we just underestimate the power of the word. Again, is not is my, my word like a hammer? By the word, the worlds were framed. He holds all things together by the word of his power. Everything was created by the word. And then the word was made flesh and tabernacled among us. And now that flesh, the last Adam, became the life-giving spirit. And now he's in us to be stirred up as a fountain. How do you stir that fountain up? How do you get that water flowing? You speak to the rock, right? You just speak the word concerning who you are. And what does it do? It washes your mind. You're putting off the old man, putting off your feelings, putting off, you know, what your senses are telling you. And you're putting on Christ. And when you put on Christ, you don't make provision for the flesh. That's how you practically don't. It says, put on the Lord Jesus and make no provision for the flesh. That's not two different things. Putting on Christ subdues the flesh. So what people find is that a lot of their issues with sin and their struggle with sin vanish. Not 100% but are greatly subdued because their mind is not on the flesh, but on the spirit. Their mind is life and peace. Their mind is agreeing with the witness of the spirit. 
that says we are children of God and bears witness to all the good things God has for us. We are just walking in harmony with who we really are. We are the sons of God. We are heirs together with Christ. We are blessed. We are joyful. We are holy. We are sanctified. We are new creatures. We are part of the masterpiece of God. We are his workmanship. He loves us, you know? And as we acknowledge these things, we are participating in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Again, Philemon, uh, the communication or the fellowship of your faith becomes effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ. What are you doing? You're just acknowledging the truth. God values his word so highly that he's made it the most important way for us to, to deal with him. The word is the window into what we really are in Christ and who he really is in us. Praise God, you know. It's beautiful. And so many people struggle their whole life with how do I overcome sin and how do I over... What am I going to do, you know? When all they really need to do is tell themselves and remind themselves who they are in Christ and what Christ has done for them. And anyone who says that stupid... I just, it's like, I, that just blows me away, you know. It's not that we're convincing ourselves that we're saved. We know we're saved. We are just renewing our mind and agreeing with the holy things. You know, Philippians uh, talks about we want to set our mind on those things which are pure and excellent, and if there's any good report and anything praiseworthy, where do we find those things? They're the words, they're the heavenly descriptions and the the panoramic tour of what God's done for us in Christ that's provided in the word through the New Testament ministry uh, when you renew your mind you're just taking a tour of what God has said is real that you can't see you know you can't see it with your eyes your natural eyes but you walk by faith not by sight and Corinthians says this momentary light affliction is not worthy to be compared to the eternal weight of glory that is being wrought into us while we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are unseen. How do we look at the things that are unseen? It's called the renewing of your mind. Preach the gospel to yourself. And the bigger your trial, the harder your situation, the more your outer man is consumed and pressed when you look away from that situation and look at Christ there is an exceeding weight of eternal glory wrought into you there are going to be people who be people who shine in glory brighter uh, than others and it's by God's grace and by his creation not you know just who we are but they will have had a t story probably like fire girls, Sarah, you know, she can't do anything. I mean, you know, in a way, I, you know, because, because of our physical limitations and there's many, I was amazed how many people on my channel have said that they have chronic physical limitations and their life is just so limited. And those are the ones that are really entering in and have been. Why? Because their situation is so bad that they don't want to look at the things that are seen anymore. And so, through the ministry of the Word, they're getting a glimpse of the things that are unseen. And as they look away from the unseen to, uh, seen to the unseen, by faith, Christ is wrought into them. And even though they did less outwardly than many people who can physically go and do this and that and this and be in this ministry and that ministry there will be a greater weight of glory wrought into them. See, when our situation is easy, we like to look at our situation and enjoy it. And while we're doing that, we're not always looking at Christ. We're looking at the things that are seen. So God does bring us through things for the purpose of consuming our outer man. You know, the outer man is being consumed, but the inner man is being renewed. And that renewing is a weight of glory that's being wrought into us 
which is actually Christ himself being written on our hearts, making us an epistle of Christ. The more glimpses we have of him, the more revelation we have of him, the more we look away to him through the faith in the word, the more we gain him. You say, what does it mean to gain Christ? That's it. It is the eternal weight of glory being wrought into me as I look not to those things which are seen, but the unseen. For the seen things are temporal, the unseen things are eternal. How do I do that? By the eyes of faith. What does faith come from? The hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And you know, our natural man, because we are Gentiles, grafted in contrary to our nature in many cases, doesn't like the word. We just, we think it's boring. We were like, give me something exciting. Give me some cereal. Give me some, give me a good movie to watch, you know. Uh, we get bored easily. And so our natural man just doesn't really think about these things. So God brings us through things, you know, and that's what Second Corinthians is all about, is a ministry that's produced as God delivers his people over to death, you know, delivers them over to hardship so that the outward vessel can be pressed and the treasure within can be worked in some more and Christ can shine that much more brightly because you're forced to trust not in your flesh but in him who gives life to the dead you're forced to look at the word that's what the wilderness was for it brought them out of Egypt with all its pleasure and splendors into the wilderness where there was nothing in the outward realm but the manna and that's all they had was manna but that manna was Christ they got tired of it because they were in the flesh but the manna is what yields eventually to the riches in the good land the manna is the path you have gotta eat the manna <laughs> and you should rejoice if you've been given trials in your life that make this life bleak enough that you want to look away and see what we've been looking away to unfortunately is the rapture dates rather than to Christ himself in the gospel. And the rapture dates are not eternal, unseen things. Those are all based on things that are seen, the signs. Not, I'm not undermining the significance of the signs, but those are for us to know to look up. And to look up means to open our eyes to the things that are not seen, to the eternal things, and to gain Christ. So that when we are revealed with him, when Christ who is our life is manifested and we're manifested with him in glory, we will have gained a portion of Christ wrought into us as a weight of glory and we will shine with him. And in a way it's sovereign. It's up to God how much you suffer and how, what, what kind of situations you go through. But the people who suffer a lot in this life and through that suffering don't become bitter, but instead look away to Christ and become renewed will shine very brightly. Um, and you know, I'll probably do my testimony about preaching the gospel to myself, uh, but I've done it a lot of times, you know, so anyway, have a good day.